Kaizan's Legion is spoken of throughout the wasteland in fear and in whispers. The brutal empires one forged on conquest, assimilating tribes and murdering combatants in their bid to carry out the glory of their leader Kaizar. As of 2281, the Legion is locked in direct conflict with their ideological foe, the NCR, to lay claim to the Mojave Wasteland. Residents of New Vegas and its outer regions live in fear of falling under the rule of the pseudo-Roman marauders. A fate that has happened already to many of the Wastelanders who live in the now-conquered Legion lands in the East. So what would life be like for these civilians in Legion territory? The Legion controls huge swaths of territory, the entirety of the pre-war states of Arizona and New Mexico, as well as much of Utah and Colorado, are under the control of Kaiser and his Legion. The landmass is estimated to cover 300,000 miles, or for my fellow non-Americans, 482,000 kilometers. Located within this expanse are the civilians within the Legion, or as they're known, subjects. Although living under Legion rule, it's important to note that subjects are not slaves. They exist in a structure somewhat outside of, but still beholden to the standard hierarchy of the Legion. Subjects are the original residents and their descendants who had existed in the towns and settlements of Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, and Colorado prior to the rise of the Legion some 34 years in the past. These people differed from the tribal population that has formed the backbone of the Legion's forces, as they were, and still are for all purposes, civilized. In contrast to the tribals, they toiled the land, dredged wells, raised settlements, they essentially were similar to the towns located on the west coast, except for the fact that they had the misfortune to live in the east. As unfortunately, life in the east prior to the Legion was not an easy one. For a settler in Arizona or New Mexico, life was harsh. When not facing down mutated horrors or wasteland creatures, they'd then have to contend with the other humans in the area. Local tribals could be either ambivalent or hostile, depending on their culture. However, raider gangs, hardened and brutal after decades without a challenge, made the land one nine possible to live, without the chance of being kidnapped, murdered, or worse. Until Kaiser brought the wrath of Mars to these dissolute. The chaos and uncertainty was replaced with order and security. The residents of these towns and settlements found themselves to now be subjects of Kaiser and his legion, living and working under his protection. Although never seen in game, the developers of New Vegas had indicated that additional Legion locations had been planned to showcase these more civilian outposts within the Legion, who would not be classified as citizens, but instead non-tribal people living under Legion control. It also would have drawn a clear distinction between the Legion's treatment of non-military targets within their own territory compared to those outside of it. For example, the Legion is seen to butcher towns such as Nipton, or enslave non-tribals such as the Weathers family. However, it's an important distinction to note that the Legion is fighting within an active war zone. Non-combatants are still targeted, as they serve a purpose to undermine the towns and settlements within their enemy's sphere of influence. The Legion's treatments of non-tribals that we see in-game is actually the exception rather than the norm, with the subject showcasing just how life under the rule of Kaiser could be. The lives of these subjects would continue as they had before, albeit with some improvements. Food would be accessible to all. Access to clean drinking water would be easily available. Travel throughout the region would be possible without the prospect of danger. In towns with working generators, power is even said to flow consistently. They would be able to continue working their lands, raising their families, and living to a relatively ripe old age without fear of external forces something which is essentially unheard of across the wasteland. The Legion's ability to protect their people does earn them praise, even from NCR residents such as Cassidy. Cass states that any caravan that chooses to trade with the Legion is safe as houses, noting that not even the fiends would attack a Legion-backed caravan. She begrudgingly states that life would be a lot easier if the Legion ran the roads, and understands why some people would consider backing them. Some caravans deal with the Legion now because the security. If towns could get the same protection, a lot more tempting than you'd think. A bunch of people would be willing to side with the Legion to not have to worry about fiends and boomers and powder ganger attacks. It's not hard for some folks to sell freedom when the alternative is worse. The only thing these subjects would need to worry about would be the Legion itself. 
as although they enjoy far safer and productive lives than before, they have no real rights or freedom in what happens to the world around them. The subjects aren't slaves, but they aren't exactly free citizens either. For example, if the Legion asked them to pack up their settlement and relocate to another miles and miles away, they would, as the alternative is ending up on the wrong side of a machete or a cross. Therefore, if the Legion tells them to do something, they only ask once. Despite this, a point is made that the subjects aren't taken advantage of by Legion troops overseeing them. Sure, if a person ignores a Legionary's request or attacks them, they are in trouble. However, the Legion does not extort or commit acts of cruelty against these settlements, whether for goods, women, or for simple sport. Kaiser ruthlessly punishes any form of corruption among his troops, and any Legionary found subjugating his own subjects would be offered up to Mars as a sacrifice. The reason for these non-tribal people within the Legion's territory is that they help to bolster the Legion itself. The Legion has been described by the developers as possessing all the military fervour of the Roman Empire with none of the supporting civilian culture. The Legion is a roaming military force, with all within the Legion proper dedicated to fighting for its glory. However, the subjects fulfil the role of helping to supply the Legion with a healthy amount of resources, willingly given up in exchange for their protection. This can come in a variety of different forms. Subjects are expected to pay tithes or tribute to their Legion overlords to fund their expeditions or fill their war chest. They are also given the liberty to manage their own communities and farms in exchange for a large portion of the food and water generated from this undertaking. The Legion is a huge nation, on par with the NCR, and so it can't rely on pillaging and war alone for supplies. Kaiser requires a standing base of non-military subjects to ensure that his legionaries have enough supplies to last in their conquests. It's comparable to the taxes seen in the NCR, the difference being that the money and supplies collected are never used to improve their own local areas, it goes directly to Kaiser and his troops. However, many in the NCR likely feel the same about their own situation. In exchange, these subjects are given the freedom to live without the threat of annihilation from outside threats hanging over their heads, which is honestly a bit of a luxury in the post-war world. It is a bit discomforting that these people do end up with liberties and freedoms taken from them. However, we're also analysing this from the lens of our own safe real world. Even in Fallout 4, the settlement's acquisition quests undertaken by the Minutemen are kind of comparable to the Legion's control over towns and settlements. As an example, in Fallout 4, a settler states that a pack of ghouls or raiders are terrorising their lands. The Minutemen go destroy the threat, and the settler gives them their thanks and decides to join them or gives them resources. In comparison, a raider gang in Arizona might be extorting a local settlement. The Legion comes through and chooses one or all of the following options for the raiders. Crucifixion, murder, or enslavement. Like the East Coast counterparts rewarding the Minutemen by joining them, these settlers then also end up joining the Legion, although there probably is a lot less choice given in the matter. Kaiser is ultimately a peaceful and caring lord for his subjects, and really the vast majority of subjects don't mind that they have no say in the world around them, as they never felt like they did anyway. Civilians from outside of Legion lands also have the freedom to traverse the territories of the Legion, seemingly having the ability to come and go as they please. Dale Barton, an independent trader, states that he's able to travel on his own throughout Arizona and New Mexico, given the fact that the Legion has eliminated all hostile wildlife and raider gangs in the regions. Barring selling drugs or alcohol, civilians can have quite a good time in Legion lands, being able to make themselves a tidy profit due to the lack of taxes needed to be paid or guards needed to be hired, compared to the so-called civilized lands of the NCR. It could also be argued that the purpose of having these non-tribal subjects is somewhat of an intellectual thought experiment for Kaiser. His overall goal is to transform the Legion, as well as the NCR, into a newly synthesized society, combining the military might of the Legion with the civil infrastructure of the NCR. Having his Legion facilitate the protection of these subjects, and utilising the subjects to help support his Legion, is almost a microcosm of what he intends to do to the NCR just on a much smaller scale. The benefits to living under Legion rule have evidently reached all the way to the NCR, given the fact that Cass, an NCR citizen herself, previously stated that many would be willing to side with the Legion purely for the guarantees of safety and protection. This is even referenced in the endgame slides for a Legion victory. 
Although they are confirmed to have enslaved conquered Mojave residents, much of the population of the Mojave are stated to be peacefully lorded over by Kaisar's legion, with civilization said to finally be brought to the people of New Vegas. Now, there is much that can be said of the pros and cons of living under the legion, and yet there's no denying there's a great deal of cons. Much of the arguments about this can be boiled down to statements like safe roads good, NCR bad, which probably isn't that far off. However, we are somewhat limited to this view if we're looking at it from our own worldview, or even from that of a member on the West Coast. No doubt the West Coast did suffer in the years after the bombs fell. The incursions from the Master's Army and the Enclave would have caused immense damage to the peoples of the region. And yet, due to the actions of our player character in Fallouts 1 and 2, the West Coast was able to stabilise and even give rise to the largest post-war nation seen in the world. The people in the East had no such messiah to solve their problems, only the Legion. Arcade Ganon states emphatically that he can't believe a society like the Legion, or a person like Kaiser, could come to exist, to which a high intelligence courier can retort that a person living in the West can't begin to understand what Kaiser and the tribes had gone through. The Legion is merciless and brutal, yes, but that's because that's what it needed to be to survive. Growing up in a safe democratic nation, an NCR resident might hold dear to their values of freedom and personal liberty. But a subject in the East might hold different values. Freedom sounds very nice to them, but prior to the Legion, all they had was the freedom to be taken advantage of and die in a hostile wasteland. A Roman historian had once lamented the Empire's brutal conquest into Gaul. In their bid to control the region and safeguard their empire, Entire populations of the opposing forces' men were slaughtered upon defeat, serving as a warning to any would-be challenger against the might of the Romans. Ironically, it was this very method that Caesar had modelled the modus operandi of his legion on. Although the land was now pacified, the historian despaired of the stability brought to the region by brute force, declaring that they make a desert and call it peace. But the people of the post-war United States already do live in a deserted wasteland, one filled to the brim with monsters, both beasts or in human skin. If you're already living in a wasteland, it might as well be peaceful.